Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we will build another SFF PC using the ZZAW C2P MATX. But before that, I have to do something. So the build would be composed of mostly these components in this case. So this case is a dark flash DLM21 mesh. There's really nothing wrong in this case except for one, which is this part. This is the PCIe slot, so the screws aren't really tight since Dark Flash did not provide any screw for PCIe. So I just used any screw that I have. So as you can notice, it's very dirty. I think I can show it to you. See, the reason is that this PC runs 24-7. And what do we do with this PC? We play Mir 4 on it. Since it's an AFK game, you can literally leave it and it will just play on its own. So as for the specs, the motherboard is the Gigabyte Aorus B660M. I think it's an Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I unboxed it earlier. So it's that same motherboard. The processor is an Intel i5-12600. It is non-K. So it means that it doesn't have the efficiency cores of the key processors. And there's actually no reason to buy this processor except that back then, 12400 was out of stock. So I had no choice but to buy a 12600. There was a long story behind this processor. I actually bought a 12500 at the time. But IT World was not able to provide a 12500 since it was out of stock. So it was in stock in Lazada but out of stock in real life so they called me and gave me an offer to upgrade so i added 500 pesos to upgrade to a so-called 12600 as for the fans i have three different sets of fans so this is a tough fan which i got from the zaku case these are in-win fans and these are arctic f12 fans so these two fans are very noisy this fan is okay it's quite enough. This fan has a, a bit of a hum. So I'm not going to reuse all the fans. I bought a few fans. Actually, I bought Arctic fans. As for the RAM, uh, let's take it out. This is a G-Skills 32GB, 3600MB transfer CL18 RAM. I really don't need 32GB of RAM, but it was very cheap back then. Anyway, here's the table of components that I will reuse and discard. Uh, let's start. So expect uh, dirty hands after this assembly. So this is the Maxan RX550. So it has been running for a few months now without stop. Still okay. Doesn't have any burnt marks yet, but it's uh, dirty now. So unplug the USB 3. USB 3 is the trickiest to unplug. This is the fan header. The next difficult part is to pull this power. Oh, it was easy. So this is the CPU power. USB 2. Then front headers, then the SATA. This is for the fan as well, CPU fan. So, so unlike my previous videos where I disassembled the build after it's being shot and benchmarked, in this build we will really use the case uh, 24 by 7. So it will be long-term build. As for this case, this DLM21 mesh from Dark Flash is actually very good in terms of compatibility. It can mount a 240 in the front, probably a 280 mm radiator in the front, 240 in the top. So if you can notice there's a gap here which is good enough for normal radiators at the bottom there's actually a hard disk drive tray and two of those however my wife was envious of the skta09 build that i made last august so it's actually my first sff build but i can't give her an itx build now since i only have one itx motherboard and i will not have any use of this afterwards So as you can see, it's already dirty from the fans, but I really like this motherboard. So for the storage, I just tuck it in there. That's the good thing about SSDs. So I need to reuse this SSD, which is a Samsung 860 EVO, if I am not mistaken. Oh, 870 EVO, I'm sorry, which is a 500 gigabyte storage. So usually in SFF builds, I don't recommend to use a 2.5 inch SSD, but I have no choice since this build has less budget. <laughs> As for the case, I'll keep it. 
Okay, so I found the box of the motherboard. So just to reintroduce the motherboard, this is a B660M Aorus Pro AX DDR4. Compatible with, with 12th gen, but with BIOS update, it can be compatible with, to 13th gen. So it's a bit dirty, so I'm see if I can remove... Oh, I can see how dirty it is. Okay, as yes, for this cooler, I have to take it out. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with this cooler except that it's loud at times. So if you're not sure how to unmount your Intel cooler, just rotate it counterclockwise. So I have to clean the thermal paste. So you usually uh, use 99% alcohol and cotton. So I use cotton <laughs> instead of paper towels. You can use Q-tips which is a smaller version of the cotton. <laughs> it will take time. You can also use a microfiber cloth but for processors, cotton and 99% isopropyl alcohol works best. So immediately a lot of paste was removed and it's clean immediately. So yeah, as you can see, this is the 12600 Nan-K. So I'm going to remove the RAM just to get a good look at the processor. So I'm just trying to get a good look at the processor if there was some bowing that happened. It was a big issue with the ILMs of the 12th gen. But it seems that uh, this is good. Oh! Yes, it's a bit bowed, uh, but not as bad as the ones that I've seen online. Okay, so I'm going to use the thermal right SS135 cooler. So I need the LGA17 XX bracket, which is this one. So my only issue here is that the manual of thermal right for LGA17 XX is Chinese. So there's no English at the back. I just realized it recently when I'm preparing for this video. You can't read much Chinese, so uh, enter four pieces going up. Anyway, seems that it's easy to follow, so I'll follow based on the diagram. So first, I have to put the back plate. Next, it seems that I have to put the standoffs. So there's no orientation in the standoffs for LGA 1700. So I'll just go with whatever. <laughs> so it seems that I cannot use any screwdriver for this. Based on the diagram, it should be facing inside. It should be like this. So for this cooler, it has this D12 Pro. As told in my previous video, it's very loud. So I'm going to replace it. So I'm going to replace it with an Arctic Bionics P120. So this is the same fan that comes with Arctic Freezer 34 eSports Duo. It was very quiet. So I hope it's still quiet with this heatsink. So the cooler is supposed to... Oh, I think I made it wrong. So it's going to be this way. I want it to be this way. Just going to test something. So I'm thinking if I will mount it like this or mount it like this. So the difference will be where do I want the air to go? Do I want it to go that way or do I want it to go that way? Hey, there's no more paste. <laughs> there's no more paste. Okay, so I cannot use this. I think this is too little. So I have to clean this up. So the included paste is only good for probably one and a half applications. So I have a Noctua thermal paste. Isn't the best, but uh, it will do the job. I'm running out of thermal paste. Based on Noctua specifications, should only apply this amount. If I have to mount it this way, it will not touch the whole processor. So it's supposed to be this way. <sighs> Okay, fine. I reoriented the cooler. So I want the whole cold plate to touch the processor. If I'm going to mount it this way, then it will not touch the whole processor. Although the only important part for the heatsink to touch the processor is this 
small area here. I want to have the full contact. It's going to be this way. Don't over tighten as usual. CPU fan installed. So I'll uh, set this aside. Yeah. Okay, time to unbox this case. So again, this is the ZZAW C2P, which is an MATX SFF case. Unbox. Okay, so the box has an accessory package. Then you can pull this out. So this is the case. This is also my first look at the case. So everything in this build is ad lib. So there's no script in this build. The foam is very thick. It's more than one inch. It has a dust bag. I think this is their, I'll, I'll call it standard packaging. So it's actually very small. I was very surprised how small it is. It's around probably 15 inches tall. Anyway, I'll post the specs on the screen. So I have to remove the tempered glass first. C2 Plus is around 15.3 liters. It's very small. So these are not thumb screws, so you have to use a screwdriver. Save the peel for last. Okay, let's talk about what's inside. So it has dust filters, a few of them, which is good. However, I'm really not sure how they planned for me to install this. So I assume it should be this way. So if I install it at the bottom, then I can't install the fan. If I install the fan first, then I can install the dust filters. So I don't like this because it's using adhesive tape. The best thing to use for this is a magnetic ones. So this is one thing that I don't like with ZZAW. So if you'll notice, there's an extension cable for power cord. So it will go here, this one. Then this is the USB 3 cable. Power LED and power switch. The, the front panel only consists of power switch and USB 3. That's it. Nothing more. It's very light as well. Standoffs are very tall. It's around 2 to 3 cm tall. So I guess you can route some cables underneath. Okay, so let me try to remove the power supply tray. So this has bracket for SFX or ATX power supply. Okay, let's check the accessories package first. Uh, what's included? Okay, nothing more. So it has zip ties, bunch of screws, and for PCIe cover. Then the end, I also need this. I also need the screws. Zip ties, I'll think about it. This one, don't need this. So anyway, let's mount the biggest problem first, which is the motherboard. Okay, so there are a bunch of screws. Be careful not to lose this. So what I need are motherboard screws. So usually it will look like this. It has a crown. Screws don't align, especially the top part. This is the toughest part to screw the top right. So I had to really push this side so that I could be, I would be able to screw this. So once it's screwed, seems that all of the screw holes are already aligned. And then the power switch. Then the USB 3, which is uh, this way. So as for power supply, I'll be using a Seasonic Prime. This is a 750 watt box, but the power supply inside is 650 watts. So we'll plug in some power connectors first, because it will be tough to plug this in later. So this is for the CPU. So this has basically has 8 plus 4 power connectors, but I will only use a 4 plus 4 pin. So with 12600, it should be fine. So I also need a 24 pin. So this goes to the PSU. Then this goes to the motherboard. Then I also need this cable later for the SATA SSD. But for now, I'll, I think I'll install the PSU. So this is a used PSU. I've been using this for quite some time already in my main PC. So this is a 650 watt power supply. So these cables are from the 750 watts. 
power supply. So you have to be 200% sure if you are going to use a power supply with different sets of cables. So you have to email Seasonic if it's really compatible. If you are using another brand, then you have to email that manufacturer for confirmation that you could reuse the power connectors. Otherwise, it will explode. So that's your worst case scenario. Yeah, it's like this. So I have to do it like this. And screw it before I mount it that way. Okay, so plug the extension cable first. Okay, so you can align the screw holes. So if you'll notice, this has few screw holes. So it's compatible with SFX power supply. Okay, usually I would only install three screws, but this time around I installed four because it will be overhung to the top. So I need all the support that I can get from the bracket. Okay, so I'm having a hard time to install this. It's very big, but it is within spec, so I already checked. Okay, okay. So I finally found out what's wrong. So I have to remove the motherboard. <laughs> because of this tray so so you have to insert it first then slide so i cannot fully insert it this way because the power supply will be blocking that angle so yes i really have to slide it there then you can screw it now going to install first the uh, CPU power. It's really tight. Somehow it managed to fit in. Now it's time to screw again. Plug in the USB 3. Plug in the front panel headers. So time to install the fans. Okay, somehow I managed to push it down. So I'll just use two screws. If it vibrates hard, then I'll screw the others as well so as for the ssd i can mount it like this at the side bottom right like this at first i have to put power on it plug the sata cable to the motherboard so i can plug in another 90 millimeter fan here and for that i'm going to use a different brand which is Sight Kaze Flex. Kaze means wind in Japanese. Plug the fan header together with the Arctic fans. Install the bottom fans and plug it to the header. So originally I planned to install this Sapphire Nitro Plus RX6800 in this build. But it seems that I will not be able to fit it. I tried hard to fit it. First of all, to really hit the end of the case like this <laughs> so it will really not fit so it's supposed to fit but it will not because of the io shield io plate io whatever <laughs> so okay giving up on the rx6800 on this and so with that i'm going to install a different graphics card so this is a palit it's dirty this is a palit 2060 super this would be easy since it's small then just the power connector. Oh, I forgot to put screws here. It's also good to install these PCIe covers. Okay, so I used a different motherboard screw because I can't find one anymore. Okay, so the build is done. Uh, I just have to test it if it will work. I will not put the tempered glass side panel for now since might not post. <laughs> not sure if this will still work. My RTX 2060 Super. Okay, the build posted immediately, but I quickly noticed the loud fans. 
I checked the PC and noticed that the CPU fan was not spinning. The reason is that I tucked the cable too much to the CPU cooler and so it was not spinning. After plugging out the cables from the cooler and doing a simple spin test, I was then confident to put in the side panels. As for aesthetics, this has one of the better looking tempered glass side panels out there. Since there was minimal RGB, you can only see some grey accents behind the glass. The cable mess was also hidden well as it faded beyond the glass. As for CPU temps while running Cinebench R23, the CPU temps averaged at 58.72 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 60 degrees Celsius. While running FE15, the CPU temps averaged at 60.03 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 67 degrees Celsius, while the GPU had an average temps of 81.11 degrees Celsius and maxed at 83 degrees Celsius. Note that for the GPU, this is the same result as what I had in an open-air test bench. Palette's 2060 Super is really hot and I may need to do some cleaning. Note that I also checked for thermal throttling and there was none. As for my tips on building this case, if you want to use the included dust filters, install it first before everything else. You can still easily drive the screw through the dust filter to install your fan. But take note that the dust can still manage to seep in between the case and the filter. And so I am sure that it will be a nightmare to clean in the future since you won't be able to simply remove the dust filters compared to magnetic ones. If you are going to use an ATX power supply, if it is modular, plug in the cables first to the power supply, plug the extension cable, and ensure that your PSU is on. Install it first before the motherboard. The spec said that your PSU should be shorter than 140mm for maximum GPU compatibility. But I disagree, as 140mm does not consider the cable outs yet. That will add another 10mm or so, which might hinder long GPU installation. To make things easier, I suggest using an SFX power supply. SFX PSUs have shorter cables, thus less clutter. The PSU chassis is also shorter at 125mm and likely very easy to install in this case. It will also give more room to your GPU. As for GPU compatibility, days after the build, I tried to install the 6800 once more to no avail. I even tried to remove the CPU cooler but the GPU was not able to fit thanks to the motherboard heatsink and the shallow depth of the case. I then measured the opening of the case and it was just 320mm, short of 8mm in their compatibility list. Another note is ZZAWs versus GPU manufacturers definition of GPU length. If GPU manufacturers mention 310mm in length, it is 310mm in length excluding the IO plate. But for ZZAW, it seems that IO plate's length should be considered. IO plate's length is usually 15mm so if I use ZZAW's definition, then the RX 6800 is 325 millimeters long, which is 5 millimeter longer than the opening. So that's why I was not able to fit it. My overall suggestion for GPU compatibility is to get at most 300 or maybe 305 millimeter in length in GPU manufacturer's definition. Don't use uh, ZZAW's definition. This is to reduce your headache in installation as well. One final thing to note in this case is that it isn't magnetic, so even if you have a magnetic dust filter, it won't stick. Your Wi-Fi antenna will then not stick to this case as well. Overall, it was a very difficult build. It took time, more time that I, <laughs> that I expected, but the case is really okay. It performs well thermally. It looks good, more so in person rather than in camera. And I also achieved what my wife wanted, a smaller and more quiet PC. To the guys out there, remember, happy wife, happy life. The price is also not too expensive at 3.7k pesos or around 60 US dollars. And so I'm okay to recommend this case but proceed with caution on its compatibility. Okay, this was a very long video and I hope that you liked it. Do let me know in the comments below on what you think of this video format and the build itself. As always, thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing and benchmarks. Bye!